This is MathHeals.com where you can find more links to math and computer science YouTube videos. Let's take a look at multiplying polynomials. I'm going to take a look at our first problem. Let's to start a new page though. There we go. We've got uh, 3a to the 5th, b to the 3rd, times negative 2 a b to the fourth well this is a monomial times a monomial and uh, if you have numbers out in front you multiply the numbers together first 3 times negative 2 gives us negative 6 then you multiply the a's a to the fifth times a to the just times a and this is like a to the first so a to the fifth times a to the first you add together the exponents that gives us a to the six and b to the third times b to the fourth, uh, you add the exponent, so that gives us b to the seventh. So again, if you have different variables, all you do is multiply them together uh, separately. a to the fifth times a, and then b to the third times b to the fourth. Now the next problem, we have uh, 9y times y squared minus 2y minus 5. Now we got a single term out in front, and uh, having it right next to parentheses indicates multiplication. And we got three terms inside. That's a trinomial, and a monomial out here. Well, we're going to take this uh, term, the 9y, multiply it times our first term, multiply it times our second term, and times our third term. I'll write out a step at least for this one. Uh, we got 9y times y squared. We got 9y times negative 2y and 9y times negative 5. Well, um, the 9 carries down here. y to the first times y squared gives us y to the third. Remember, you add the exponents. 9 times negative 2 is negative 18, and y times y gives you y squared. 9 times negative 5 is negative 45, and then the y carries, carries along. And that's our answer. look at one with fractions. We got 7 halves xy times 8 fourteenths x to the third minus 6 sevenths xy plus 3 fourteenths xy to the fourth. Now, even they, though they look pretty nasty, um, we have a single term out in front, and we've got three terms inside. So we're going to take that uh, 7 halves xy, multiply it times our first term, times our second term, and times our third term. Well, um, we've got 7 halves uh, xy times 8 fourteenths x to the third, and we've got 7 halves xy times negative 6 sevenths xy and 7 halves xy times 3 fourteenths xy to the fourth. I'll handle the numbers or uh, the fractions here in a second. Uh, let me just go ahead for the time being put them next to each other. So I got 7 halves times 8 fourteenths now we got x to the first times x to the third, that gives us x to the fourth, and then the y carries along. Here positive times a negative is negative, and I got 7 halves times 6 sevenths. x times x is x squared, y times y is y squared, plus 7 halves times 3 fourteenths. x times x is x squared, y times y to the fourth is y to the fifth. Again, we're adding the exponents. If you just have a single x or a single y, it's the same as the first power. Well, now, uh, 7 and 14, uh, both visible by 7. 7 divided by 7 is 1. 14 divided by 7 is 2. 2 and 8 are both visible by 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1. 8 divided by 2 is 4. And uh, we're left with uh, 4 divided by 2, which is 2, x to the fourth, y. Now here we got 7 and 7. Those both divisible by 7, so those go away. 2 and 6 both divisible by 2. So 2 divided by 2 is 1. 6 divided by 2 is 3. 
So we're left with minus 3 x squared y squared. Now over here, 7 and 14, both divided by 7. 7 divided by 7 is 1, 14 divided by 7 is 2. 1 times 3 gives us 3. 2 times 2 gives us 4. So we've got 3 fourths, x squared, y to the fifth. And that's our answer. Let's take a look at this one. Four. We got uh, x plus seven times x minus four. Now we got two terms in our first set of parentheses, and we got two terms in our second set of parentheses. So I'm going to take my first term in the first set of parentheses, the x, multiply it times each term over in the second set of parentheses. I'll also take my second term in my first set of parentheses and multiply it times both terms in the other parentheses. So I'm just going to follow the lines here. So we're going to take x times x. We'll take x times negative 4. 7 times x. And 7 times negative 4. Well, x times x is x squared x times negative 4 is negative 4x, 7 times x is 7x, and 7 times negative 4 is negative 28. Now always you want to combine together like terms. Negative 4x plus 7x, like term, same variable, the same power, and you add or subtract the numbers that are out in front. Well, negative 4 plus 7 gives us 3x minus 28. And that's our answer. Now, um, I like to use the line method because they just follow the lines to see what to multiply together. But there's another method for doing uh, binomial times a binomial. That's to multiply your first parts together. And the x's are the first parts in each. Now the outer parts, that's the x and the negative 4. And then the inner parts, 7 times the x. And then the last part, 7 and negative 4. And that's your foil. Um, that's about the only one I'm really going to show of that example. Uh, if you like FOIL, um, if it works for you, then go ahead and keep using it. I'll use a line method. I had a professor one time said that uh, FOIL is the worst thing that uh, happened to algebra. And um, I was wondering what he meant by that. I didn't say anything. Somebody else in the class did. They said, well, what do you mean by that? And he said, well, if you have to ask that question, then you wouldn't understand. Um, <laughs> and I'd done a lot of thinking about that afterwards. And um, I think that a lot of people don't know when to use FOIL. Uh, they try to FOIL everything. And you can only do that when you got two terms and two terms. A binomial times a binomial. Now let's take a look at this one. We got uh, 8x minus 1 times x minus 3. It's got a binomial times a binomial again. We're going to take the first term here, the 8x, multiply it times every term over here. Then we'll take our second term, the negative 1, and we'll multiply it times each term over here. Now we got 8x times x, and 8x times negative 3. We also have negative 1 times x, and negative 1 times negative 3. Well, 8x times x is 8x squared. 8x times negative 3 is negative 24x. Negative 1 times x is negative 1x, or just negative x. Negative 1 times negative 3 is a positive 3. Always combine together like terms, no matter where you're at. Negative 24x, negative 1x is negative 25x, plus 3. And that's our answer. Let's look at this one. We got uh, 3x minus 1 and 4x squared plus 7x minus 2. We've got two terms here, we've got three terms over here. So I'm going to take my first term, the 3x, multiply it times the 4x squared times the 7x and times the negative 2. And we'll take this negative 1 and multiply it times the 4x squared times a 7x, and times a negative 2. So I'm just going to follow the line see what to multiply together. So we'll take 3x times 4x squared, 
We'll take 3x times 7x, 3x times negative 2, then we'll go to our second term, the negative 1. We'll take negative 1 times 4x squared, negative 1 times 7x, and negative 1 times negative 2. Well, 3x times 4x squared gives us 12x to the third. 3x times 7x gives us 21x squared. 3x times negative 2 is negative 6x. Negative 1 times 4x squared gives us negative 4x squared. Negative 1 times 7x is negative 7x. And negative 1 times negative 2 is a positive 2. Now we want to combine together like terms. Remember like terms, same variable, the same power. Here we have 21x squared minus 4x squared. That gives us uh, 17x squared. Negative 6x ne and negative 7x gives us negative 13x. And then we bring down the plus 2. Uh, answering machine was going off there. Let me, um, <laughs> I threw off my concentration. 21x squared minus 4x squared, 17x squared, negative 6x. Okay, yeah, that's right. Take a look at our next problem. We have uh, 2x squared minus 3x plus 1 times 5x squared plus 4x minus 7. We got three terms times three terms. So we'll take our first term, the 2x squared, and multiply it times the 5x squared, times 4x, and times the negative 7. We'll take our second term, the negative 3x, and we'll multiply it times the 5x squared, times the 4x, and times the negative 7. And we'll take our last term, the 1, then multiply it times the 5x squared, times 4x, and times the negative 7. Now the step I usually show um, when people are first learning, once you get comfortable with these, you won't do this anymore. But I'll write it out just, just so in case you need to see it. So we'll take our first term, 2x squared, and we'll multiply it times 5x squared. We'll take our 2x squared and multiply it times the 4x. Take our 2x squared and multiply it times the negative 7. Then we'll go to our second term, the negative 3x, and we'll multiply it times the 5x squared. We'll take the negative 3x and multiply it times the 4x. Negative 3x times the negative 7. And then we'll take our last term, the 1, and multiply it times the 5x squared. Multiply it times the 4x. And we'll multiply it times the negative 7. Again, I'm just following the lines to see what to multiply together. 2x squared times 5x squared gives us 10x to the 4th. Uh, 2x squared times 4x gives us 8x to the third. 2x squared times negative 7 is negative 14x squared. Negative 3x times 5x squared gives us negative 15x to the third. Uh, negative 3x times 4x gives us negative 12x squared. Negative 3x times negative 7 is positive 21x. 1 times 5x squared is 5x squared, 1 times 4x is 4x, and 1 times negative 7 is negative 7. Now let me double check everything here. 10x to the fourth plus 8x to the third minus 14x squared, negative 15x to the third, negative 12x squared plus 21x. Okay. Now let's combine together like terms. Uh, here we have an 8x to the third. Here's a negative 15x to the third. And that gives us negative 7x to the third. Um, here's an x squared. Here's an x squared. And here's an x squared. Negative 14 and negative 12 gives us negative 26. Plus 5 is negative 21x squared. Negative 26, negative 21, okay. And here we got 21x and 4x, that gives us 25x, minus 7. Assuming no basic math error, that's our answer. Let's take a look at some special products. we got uh, y plus 3 times y minus 3. 
Well, let's use the lines here. Uh, we'll take y times the y and times the negative 3. And we'll take the 3 times the y and times the negative 3. And we got y times y, y times negative 3, 3 times y, and 3 times negative 3. y times y is y squared, y times negative 3 is negative 3y, 3 times y is 3y, and 3 times negative 3 is negative 9. N combine together like terms, negative 3y plus 3y drops away, and we got y squared minus 9. Why is this a special product? These are conjugates. Um, what conjugate means is your first and last is the same, but sign the middle is different. See how they both start with y, and they both end with 3. But this one's a positive, and this one's a minus in here. Um, when you got conjugates, actually all you have to do is multiply your first parts together and your last parts. y times y gives you your y squared, and 3 times negative 3 gives you your negative 9. That'll always work with conjugates. Now, if you don't see it, It'll work out anyway. You see how our middle terms dropped away? So um, it's no big deal if you don't recognize their conjugates. In this one, we have 2x minus 5 squared. Now, a lot of people mess this up. What you have to do is you have to write it as 2x minus 5 times 2x minus 5. You can't just square the 2x and square the 5. You have to write it out this way. Um, if everything is multiplication or division inside of parentheses and you're raising it to a power, that's where you can square everything inside. Well, we're going to take our 2x times each term in our second set of parentheses. And we'll take our negative 5 times each term in our second set of parentheses. So we got 2x times 2x. We got 2x times negative 5 negative 5 times 2x, and negative 5 times negative 5. Just follow in the lines. 2x times 2x gives us 4x squared. 2x times negative 5 is negative 10x. Negative 5 times 2x is negative 10x. And negative 5 times negative 5 is a positive 25. Uh, combine the like terms, negative 10x, negative 10x is negative 20x, plus 25. And that's our answer. Now this one actually does have a formula. Uh, it's not worth uh, memorizing the formula um, because it's just as easy just to multiply it out like you just saw me do it. Now conjugates will save you time, but uh, try to memorize the formula for this. It's not really necessary. And that's the end of that section. So let me go ahead and stop the recorder.